For time immemorial, the stunning landscapes of the Americas were roamed by equally impressive denizens. Towering mammoths traversed the plains, fearsome saber-toothed cats prowled the night, and a large menagerie of other beasts guarded the landscape. Their reign only ended at the end of the last glacial period, replaced by a variety of smaller yet still charismatic creatures. Though the extinction of 72% of megafaunal species in North America had profound impacts on the environment, and thousands of years later, we are still wondering what caused such a drastic change. Today, we are going to be talking about an important study which has provided us with valuable insights into what happened to the North American megafauna. Nestled within the heart of urban Los Angeles lies the echoes of a lost world, the La Brea Tar Pits. More than one million bones have been recovered from this amazing site. The tar pits have been capturing and preserving its prey for over 50,000 years. To the animals of its day, the pits looked inconspicuous. Water, dust, and leaves disguised the viscous natural asphalt which lies beneath. Herbivores would wander in looking for a drink or to cool off and find that they could no longer escape. Attracted by the struggling or perished prey, predators would also become trapped. For thousands of years, predator and prey alike would become victims. Even a human wandered in around 10,000 years ago. Tar is extremely good at preserving animal remains, and due to this, many of the bones at La Brea are nearly perfect. This has allowed researchers to extract collagen from within the bones to precisely date them. Not only can we directly date the remains of these animals, but also the layers they are in, giving us the opportunity to understand the environmental conditions of the time. This study dated eight of the most common mammal species found in the La Brea tar pits from 15.6 to 10,000 years ago. These species would be the dire wolf, coyotes, the American lion, ancient bison, western horse, Harlan's ground sloth, camelops, and Smilodon fatalis. They obtained 172 radiocarbon dates from this period and estimated the timing of the species' disappearance from the record. This record was then compared to the well-known regional paleoclimatic data and also to vegetation and charcoal records of ancient Southern California. These dates present a precise chronology of Pleistocene megafaunal extinction in Southern California. First, a little note on dating in this video. 13,000 BP would mean 13,000 years before the year 1950, so it would actually be 13,074 years ago as of 2024. You may not like this form of dating, but it is the kind appropriate to this context. We also must talk about two climatic periods that will be featured in this video, the Bolin Elrod and the Younger Dryas. The Bolin Elrod was an abrupt warm period from 14,690 to 12,890 BP. The Younger Dryas was an abrupt cold period from 12,850 BP to 11,700 BP. Now that we have that out of the way, Let's talk about when these animals actually went extinct. Camels and ground sloths disappeared earlier than the other animals at 13.61 and 13.81 BP. Horses disappeared at 13.03 BP, bison 13.14 BP, saber-toothed cats 13.02 BP, American lion 13.1 BP, and direwolves at 13.08 BP. These dates are all statistically contemporaneous. For Smilodon, the American Lion, the Dire Wolf, the Western Horse, and Harlan Sloth, these are the youngest reliable dates ever uncovered. Only Camelops and species that are still extant have younger dates elsewhere, as they all survived well into subsequent periods. Furthermore, looking at occurrence rates at the pits, we can see that these species all gradually declined during the Bolin Elrod and had a significant drop at 13.25 BP. This supports the idea that these species went extinct in the region during the Bolin Elrod rather than the Younger Trias. These animals may have been entirely extinct in the region centuries before the Younger Trias would even start in the North Atlantic. The North American megafauna are typically thought to have gone extinct after the onset of the Younger Trias at 12,850 years ago. Though only 25 reliable direct dates on North American megafauna fall within the Younger Trias. These dates were all retrieved decades ago and should be redated. Implicating the Younger Dryas as the cause of the extinction of the megafauna everywhere is currently unsupported. Though the very last of some of these species may have died out during the Younger Dryas, we can clearly see that they were extinct in some areas already. 
Further insights about the possible cause for their extinction can be found by looking closer into the composition of the site. Throughout the bowling Elrod, herbivore remains suggest a transition from browser-dominated to grazer-dominated herbivore communities. Camels became less common over time, while horses became more frequent. Overall, this suggests changing vegetation, favoring grazers over browsers. Carnivores became more common in the layers right before their subsequent disappearance. This may reflect increased carnivore reliance on entrapped prey. Coyotes are one of the few large mammal species to survive the extinction, but even their occurrence rates drop along with the other animals, but they resume later at 12.54 BP and continue into the Holocene. Well-studied environmental data from Pleistocene California was paired alongside the tar pit data to further understand the disappearance of these animals. Temperature and precipitation records show that the environment experienced significant warming and drying during the bowling Elrod. Mean annual air temperatures show a 5.6 Celsius increase in temperature between 14 and 13,000 years ago and an additional 4.4 Celsius from 13 to 11.8 thousand years ago. A steep rise in salinity of Lake Elsinore is indicated between 13.7 and 13.2 thousand years ago, indicating drier conditions. Pollen records from Lake Elsinore show a trend of warming and drying throughout the Bolin Elrod. Species such as juniper and oak are replaced by species with high fire resistance. The proportional replacement of camels and sloths by horses is consistent with the transition to more open and grassy vegetation. Available data shows a gradual drying and opening of the landscape from 16 to 13.8 thousand years ago before having a stabilization until 13.21 thousand years ago when a rapid change happens reducing tree cover even more. This data directly coincides with the remains in the tar pit. Shortly after 13.21 thousand years ago, five of the eight species tested disappear. Charcoal sediment analysis from Lake Elsinore are consistent with the observed climate and vegetation as well as the disappearance of the mega herbivores. Its magnitude is unprecedented in the 33,000 year record. Such an immense burning of biomass may have been caused by the warm and arid conditions being unsuitable for large herbivores. Their absence may have led to an accumulation of fuel for these fires to devour. A new source of ignition from our species, whether intentional or accidental, may have been the reason these fires were so unprecedented. The emergence and spread of the Clovis megafauna hunters happened around 13,050 years ago. This postdates the last occurrences of some of the megafauna at the tar pit by around two centuries. Horses, Smilodon, the American lion, and coyotes are the only megafauna species to survive the Clovis' arrival in the region. From this graph, we can clearly see that the woodland environment and the megafauna were drastically declining together. Then the Clovis culture appeared and fires became extremely common. After these fires decline, the ecosystem is fundamentally different and the megafauna is no more. The Clovis appears to have been the final nail in the coffin of this ecosystem. Though even after this collapse, the Clovis hunters persisted for around 140 years before adapting into new cultures after the onset of the Younger Dryas. The records of climate change, biomass burning, megafaunal extinction, and human demographic growth mark a profound shift in the ecosystem structure of Southern California near the end of the Bolin Elrod. A 30-fold regional increase in charcoal accumulation and floral shifts towards fire-adapted species represent how prevalent these fires became. Dry conditions have undoubtedly been present over the past 30,000 years, but the cause of such persistent fires may be from our own species. Climate change may have dried out the ecosystem to a state where human fire activities could trigger widespread fires like never before. Studies have proven that even small populations of humans can have very disproportionate effects on the environment with the use of fire. This has been documented with the arrival of humans in Australia in which fire activity dramatically increases and megafaunal populations collapsed. In Southern California, Megafaunal species seem to have been almost entirely extinct centuries before the Younger Dryas period even began. Though we cannot say for certain if it was humans causing these fires, there is no doubt that these populations were capable of this kind of destruction. The extinction of North America's megafauna has sparked debates for decades. Instead of simply saying it was the climate's fault or it was caused by the skillful Clovis people, we must understand that dozens of important factors were all at play. This study shows that it was undoubtedly complicated, and it certainly varied from region to region. 
Other studies from northeastern United States, the Pacific Northwest, and Alaska have found evidence that megafaunal extinctions happened well before the onset of the Younger Dryas. It should not be surprising that these populations went extinct over a period of centuries since the cause of their extinction appears to have been more complicated than climate changes and, to some extent, human populations. The study is also one of many that found no evidence supporting the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis that you probably hear so much about. The idea that a comet or impactor of some kind caused the onset of the Younger Dryas in the extinction of the megafauna. But an impact is not supported by the data, and clearly from this study and others we see that megafaunal populations were already declining and extinct in some areas hundreds of years before the onset of the Younger Dryas. The evidence of unprecedented wildfires and biomass burning is often used as evidence for an impact, but it occurred long before the Younger Dryas. I made an entire comprehensive video about the subject if you are interested. The evidence is just simply not there. This study also revealed troubling information for the future of Southern California. Data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration show that Southern California has warmed around 2 degrees Celsius over the past century. That is an order of magnitude faster than the warming during the bullying Ellerod that led to the collapse of the ecosystem. Going off of the data, it is not looking good for California. I'm not making any political statements here, I never will on this channel, but it's important to look at the raw data of these things to understand the reality of the situation. If you guys like, you can argue about it in the comments, but please keep it civil. Lastly, I want to mention that this video is sponsored by Bone Clones. Bone Clones sells osteological reproductions of human and animal bones. Importantly for the channel, they make wonderful casts of ancient human remains. You have seen their Neanderthal skull on this channel and a variety of other hominin skulls. They were kind enough to give me five new skulls, including Cro-Magnon 1, which is the topic of the next video. I highly recommend you guys go check them out and get a skull or other casts. They truly look fantastic, and I always have one sitting on my desk for inspiration. Definitely would be a conversation starter at the office if you were to do the same. Use code NORTHO2 for $20 off of a purchase of $100 or more. I know I'll be using the code, so I hope you do too. Thanks for watching this video. I had a fun time researching this relatively new development on such a heavily debated topic. I may make more videos on it in the future. Comment down below any topics you would like to see covered next. And don't forget, it is free to like and subscribe. I could really use it telling by that last upload. <gasps> this has been your host, NORTHO2. And I'll see you on the next one. Arrivederci.